scenery welcomes you to Chiromo campus, home to animal houses in which scientific research takes place. Among animals housed at the facility are white rats. With a lot of research going on in the world, I was curious to know how scientific research is done on animals. My curiosity brought me to University of Nairobi School of Biological Sciences, Chiromo campus, to know why white rats are commonly used in scientific research. Morning. Morning. Welcome to the School of Biological Sciences. Thank you so much. Professor Jack Skabaru is in charge of the animal house. These are cages with rats in them. And um, these here are rats. It is clean and well maintained and looks nothing like what I had in mind. This particular room hosts different types of rats and mice. In one of the laboratories at the university, we meet Carol Murithi, a postgraduate student doing a research on how human beings behave after chewing Mira. We are assessing the effects of Mira on behavior and cognitive function. Mm -hmm. yeah. On human beings? Uh, we cannot test on human beings immediately, so we test using mice, which are a good model, an animal model that we can use, which mimics uh, animal, uh, human behavior. Go in. This is where our work area is. Uh -huh. well, yeah. This is a very closed area. You can see like even the windows are blocked, so that there is no noise and there is not a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. So that when we say that the effect is due to Mira, it's due to Mira and not uh, human interference. So what made you come up with such a topic? Mira is a, is a substance that is used by a lot of people and uh, studies have shown that it, some studies have shown that it has an effect on their brain. She first gets the animal acclimatized to the environment by gently touching them to relax. The animals used have to be marked for easy identification. Then she sets up a camera to be able to watch the animal without causing any disturbance. She starts the recording and observes the behavioral changes all day and all night. We are recording here so that uh, later on is when we'll come to analyze the, the, the movements of the animal. But why these rats? About one and a half centuries ago, a scientist decided to carry out some studies on the effects of fasting, that is staying without food for a long time, on, a human, on, on an animal body, and he used the rat. And from that time, the rat became popular as an experimental animal. We had companies, institutions in the USA and the UK, in Europe, especially uh, Europe and especially the USA, we had institutions which were actually breeding, producing and breeding rats specifically for research purposes. And those institutions, um, some of them still exist. Um, and some of the strains of rats that are used for experiments are named after those institutions. A good example is the Wista rat that we have here. The interactions between Europeans and Africa facilitated the setup of agricultural institutions in the country through which the rodents were imported into the country. These are your rats, mm -hmm. and these are the mice. First, these are different species. They are different animals. Yeah. Although we confuse them, we all call them rats. rats yes. Panya. The University of Nairobi breeds its own animals, and if it runs short, they cooperate with institutions like the Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kemri, who also have similar animals. This also helps to avoid inbreeding. We have a sister marrying, mating with a brother, and so on and so forth, in a very close-knit kind of marriage, then you are bound to get genetic diseases. Okay? So for that reason, um, after uh, several breeding cycles, we have to get some mates, maybe a male from another institution, and also we donate ours to them. Just not any other rat and mouse is used in scientific research. They have to be white, and Professor Kabaru explains why. You can easily mark individuals using a felt pen if the skin or the hair is white. If there are issues you are looking for, for example, effects like uh, inflammation, it is easier to see that on an albino or a white, uh, white animal, okay? Even the eyes, if you're, uh, you're looking for effects on eyes, it's easier to see that um, when you have an albino or a white rat. 
Nevertheless, it does not mean only white rats are used for research. We have brown, we have black, and even hooded ones, which are partially white and partially uh, black. These rats are used to generate answers to problems that humans face every day. And it is the task of the researchers to document these. The rats are mainly used, um, well, they are mainly used for um, research of testing substances, including drugs, before the test can be escalated to the human level. Uh, for example, when a drug is being treated, you want to see whether that drug works, you want to see whether it is poisonous. The rat or the mouse would be the animal of choice before that those tests are escalated to clinical trials or trials um, with human beings. And this includes even diseases like cancer, diabetes, hypertension. One can induce diabetes in a rat or a mouse and then try the new drug to treat the diabetes and so on and so forth. Okay? Parasitic diseases, malaria, sleeping sickness, some of the mice or rats can be infected with those parasites and then new drugs will be tested, um, uh, will be tested on the mice because you don't want to test new things on human beings. Animal rights are observed here to ensure no one injures them or uses them for undisclosed and sinister motives. The animal house must have good lighting, good aeration, clean water and constant supply of food. So that is my daily routine work here. Joshua Agat is the animal house attendant who ensures that the rodents are well fed and looked after. He has been doing this job for eight years now. When I come in the morning, first thing I must check if there's any sick animal. I must open all the doors and check if there's anyone sick. If there's none, or if, if there's any problem, because some can even escape, maybe if they are not close to one. From then, then I start by feeding. And if there's a day for change, because I change three times a week. Eh? So if there's a day I change, as well as I feed, that is the routine duty. Depending on the number of the animals that in a given cage, eh, sometimes I can give them two of these or one. So like in this case, I've seen there are not so many, so I'll give them half of this, eh? half of this. These cages that you see here are of international standards. The food we are giving these animals is uh, toxin free, free, aflatoxin free. We give them food without limit. We call it ad, ad libitum. We provide water and food without limit, ad libitum. We also make sure the bedding is clean. Why do we have to do this? These animals are in captivity. They cannot fend for themselves. And for this reason, ethics demands that we, the humans, take good care of them. We cannot allow anybody to conduct secret experiments. We cannot allow researchers to use more animals that they need. And indeed, there are some procedures, especially if they are painful procedures, we will deny the researcher to carry out such procedures unless it is done under anesthesia. Just like any other animal or human being, these rats and mice get medical attention when they fall sick. These have been here. We have a veterinarian on call. And we know they do not have any diseases. The ones from the bush may as well carry all kinds of diseases, which will be introduced into the lab and which will even influence the kind of results that you get. If they fall ill, especially with respiratory diseases, that kind of thing, of course, they get treated, proper treatment. Is have the material in the syringe. That's the material over there. It's just glucose, it's not harmful. For this kind of rat, it can take about 1.5 ml. Okay, 1 ml to 1.5 ml. I have Mr. Matano here to handle the animal for me. For this kind of procedure, it's dangerous if you're doing it alone. You can easily uh, get beaten. All the same, I can wear a special apron and do it, okay? But since I have uh, the assistant uh, technician, Matano, let him do it. He's going to restrain the rat using a special cloth. That cloth is, he's using is sleep proof. It does not slip. 
it's called a slip proof um maybe you can let go and get another one are you fine yeah so that's the way it is uh, the rat of course is protesting that's normal and this is what i would do um i do not force it okay this one is not it's badly held so you will, you will have to get another one this is normal if you're working with animals like rats if you don't hold it properly you do not insist you let it go so that it can get less agitated and then you pick another one okay so that is normal in this our our business it will protest like that and then look carefully i'm not going to push it through the mouth i just make it taste the sugar first it tastes the sugar first and then look the needle is going down almost by gravity i'm not pushing it i'm really not pushing that needle look at that now what is happening now it has literally the, the needle is going down the um the digestive tract almost by gravity and it's around the stomach here right now okay you can see how well smooth it goes and then only then do i depress the do i depress the the plunger very gently very very gently and there we are the needle will get out of the stomach the esophagus and the mouth very smoothly and this is because you can see it is carved this is not a mistake it was designed to go through the mouth the esophagus of the rat and down to the stomach so we have already treated that rat orally handling these animals has become a hobby for professor kabaru who has been doing this since he was a student at the university of nairobi i've been doing it for more than 30 years working with animals manipulating animals and um i like it the lab is well equipped with different tools to enable different research activities. There is an inhalation chamber in a case a researcher wants an animal to inhale vapor and sometimes they administer substances to the animals orally. If one wants to test how toxic a drug or a substance is, depending on how it is taken into the body, the effects can easily be seen through the animal. In our facilities here, new insecticides or pesticides for control of both um, doodos in the uh, in the farms and even on animals and so on and so forth partially they are tested here on these animals before uh, on behalf of government uh, regulatory agencies before they can be safely released um, into the market mm -hmm. or even the fuko the moles still you would have to test its toxicity so that it can be included in the label so that we know what would you expect if a human being accidentally for example swallowed it what will be the symptoms of the poisoning okay and the results of these tests here are then included on the label keep away from children keep away from this wash your eyes you know that kind of thing if you get uh, contaminated and so on and so forth uh, for example you would want to know if a pesticide is being sprayed what happens if it falls on the sprayer's eyes? Do they get irritated or do they go blind? Okay. We are not the actual regulator, but we provide that data authoritatively. Animals from the wild are not used in scientific research as they may end up not giving you the uniform results desired. Different researchers all over the world should be using almost identical strain of animal. This way, the results obtained in Kenya will be acceptable in the US and vice versa. You can see how intelligent they are. They make their nest mm -hmm. and the survival is almost 100%. Besides the white rats, there are so many other animals that are used in scientific research like rabbits. And also today, Professor Kabari will explain the famous saying, do not use me as a guinea pig. Guinea pigs are docile, so they are very popular uh, for use in research. They, can, they, are domestic, they were domesticated a long time ago. Maybe in Kenya they are not very popular in homesteads, but in countries in Southern America, 
These are just eaten like cuckoo, like chicken, very popular. The test which is widely conducted on guinea pigs is the test for skin sensitization or allergies. So you want to test whether beauty products, insecticides and so on and so forth will cause allergies. The guinea pig skin, specifically the skin of the male, is used for that purpose. So if the substance is going to sensitize or cause allergy in human beings, it would cause an allergy on the guinea pig skin. They are even used as pets, as you mentioned. So, yeah, it's just protesting, but it's not feeling pain. That is a normal, if it gets too happy or angry, it makes that kind of noise. So these are used to living with human beings. In many countries, especially in um, South America, you'd find them even in their houses, yeah. in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, taking scraps all off the floor, just like a kitchen, just like a, uh, a cats, mm -hmm. or even the, the, the chicken, mm -hmm. okay? And they, they're used as food. People use them as pets, especially when you have uh, people who are disabled or uh, mentally a bit uh, disturbed or something like that, who need a lot of compassion and they need uh, a companion animal. So this can be used like the way people today are using puppies. You know, this, uh, what are they called? This uh, Chihuahua. uh, chihuahuas and whatever. Yeah. You may as well have guinea pigs around. A rabbit uh, is the animal of choice. Uh, for example, when you are testing for irritation of the skin of animals, and eye irritation. As you can see, they have uh, these white rabbits here have um, beautiful white eyes. So you can, okay, they are pinkish and they are very clear. So if you apply a substance on those eyes and there is even the slightest irritation on those eyes, it will be visible. For skin irritation, these animals would have to be shaved. You would shave a patch of the skin and then treat with the substance and observe what happens for so many days. In addition to that, they are used uh, just to study anatomy and uh, as a source of blood and serum for other experiments. The rats and mice here play their role, contributing in guarding human health as it evolves. Professor Kabaru hopes that more young people will show interest in this kind of research work and take after his aging generation. Building Waliola Kitty News.